Tuesday. School hasn't gotten any better recently. Since the school week started, barely anything has been done in a school. Yesterday, Vice Principal Roy called an assembly. All students, please report to the gym immediately. For the first time since I remember, he called it for both students and faculty, which was a first. He said that this was really important, so I went. When we all got there, the assembly was hosted by Mr. Roy and the new chief of police. Ever since the old chief had disappeared some weeks ago, a new one had been sworn in. As soon as everybody arrived, it started. The police officer introduced himself as Police Chief Graham. He explained that the military would soon arrive, within two to three days, and that he expected our full cooperation during their stay. On the surface, it seemed like they wanted to organize the military and uncover the cause of what's happening. I had my suspicions. From what I had heard around the lunchroom and on the news, people were hesitant to allow the military to take over. From what they had seen during other occupations, things had not gone well. I just hoped that, regardless of the outcome, they would do their job. When we all filed out of the gymnasium and headed back to our classes, I thought about a possible escape plan. After thinking about it for a while, I remembered what the news said. How many have tried to leave already? At least 300 in the past week. I don't know what's dire, but it can't be done. From what they're saying, a barrier, whether natural or unnatural, has appeared around Plainview, mostly around the major access roads, forcing people to remain here. From what they saw, it only appeared recently, when the disappearances were linked. I really hope Roderick got out. At this point, there is so much noise that I can hardly concentrate at school on the little work we actually are doing. Every hour now, I can hear crying in the next classroom over, only to be ushered out of the room. I tried to find Alex Aruda after the assembly to ask him about what he thinks about the military. When I arrived at the classroom, I found his seat empty. Now that I thought about it, I hadn't seen Alex around the school recently. Maybe he had figured out a way out, or escaped, or maybe he disappeared. I really don't know. I, I didn't want to think about it. The days are getting faster. Get up, feed Manny, go to school, come home from school, lay around and go to sleep. It all feels like a blur to me. Ever since that night watching TV with Manny, I've had more of those episodes of me looking far away and it not seeming right. Yesterday when I looked outside, I thought I heard a snowplow going through, but everything seemed fuzzy, as if there was a tiny bit of electricity running through everything. I'm really starting to get scared. I don't know if anybody else is seeing what I'm seeing, but nobody is saying anything about it. It's probably just a lack of sleep getting to me, or at least I hope that all it is. Today is when it all started, where my real troubles began. I was sitting in my algebra class, or at least what was left of it, when I heard another announcement. Attention all staff and students, this is a lockdown, this is not a drill. Apparently a lockdown had been called. None of us really knew what to do, since the last time we practiced lockdown procedures was in 6th grade. Needless to say, all hell broke loose when it was called. Everyone was freaking out, not knowing what to do. Pressure from the last two months of disappearances did not stack up well against it, and people were scared. We didn't need to wait long as soon as we heard distant yelling coming from the hallway, and it didn't sound like a student, we all huddled around the door, trying to get a better listen. Suddenly, we all heard an ear-piercing scream coming from one of the classrooms further up. We all quickly backed away from the door and hit at the far wall, hoping to- After about 10 minutes of hiding, we finally heard sirens in the distance. I guess the cops were delayed after all the disappearances, but they were finally here. Let me tell you, they do not take kindly to little stunts like these. (laughs) 
Now, I had never actually heard a gunshot before, but they are loud. Before he got shot, he was yelling about all kinds of things. He was saying how it's eating us alive and that we would be trapped forever if we didn't take ourselves first. Well, let's just say that he stopped soon after. For a few minutes, nobody really said anything. Maybe they were focusing on the noise of the SWAT team swarming into the building, but we didn't know for sure. When the coast was clear, I decided to head out and look for Holly. I didn't know for sure what her current class was or where she was, but I knew that she would be around somewhere. After about five minutes of walking, I noticed that the school had gotten awfully quiet and the voices of people had gotten quieter. I realized that after all this, I hadn't really given myself much free time. I knew that this was not the place for writing time, but I decided that a few extra minutes couldn't hurt much. Once I had sat down for a minute, I got up and kept walking the way I was going. The people's voices had gotten much quieter, almost faster than they should have. I looked around and remembered my goal, find Holly Hills. Hum, I had almost forgotten already. Around me, there was a wall full of lockers and a row of empty classes. I guess everyone had already evacuated by now. I turned to go back the way I had come from, and after walking a little while, I realized something. Is the school bigger than I thought? I had only walked for a few minutes, but it seemed like the hallway went on for a while. Of course, I could no longer hear the voices of officers or anyone for that matter. Probably just sleep deprivation. Alright, more later. I don't know how long it's been since I last wrote in here, but my guess is a couple of hours. Ever since I got trapped in here, it's been hard to tell time. Despite my looking, I can't find any exterior doors or windows that I could use to climb out of. Even though I think this is my school, it seems that nobody has come this way for a long time. Almost like it was newly constructed days ago, rather than years. I don't know for sure if this is my school anymore, or even if that I'm still in plain view. It's almost like this is some sort of pocket dimension place, or so they call it. It constantly feels like I'm going in circles no matter what direction I go. It seems like wherever I walk, it's only bringing me farther out from the center. If there is even something like a center. If there is, maybe I can escape that way? And I decided, against my bitter judgment, to yell. Hello? Anybody hear me? I reflectively winced in preparation for a hall monitor to come my way. But of course, that never happened. I waited for several minutes, even for a hint of sound or movement other than the building itself, but nothing. Dejected, I decided to sit down. If nobody heard me scream, I would be fine taking a short nap. I was tired anyways. I picked the inside of a classroom which was perfectly clean, without a single human touch, and shut my eyes. The way I see it, if nobody woke me up while I was sleeping, then I was really in trouble. After I woke up from my nap, I felt unusually refreshed. At first I was relieved, the entire week had been one long out-of-body experience, and I was finally back at full strength. That quickly turned to terror as I realized the only way that could happen is if I slept for way too long. I hurriedly took out my phone and hastily read the time. If I had slept for that long and nobody had woken me, or even disturbed me for that matter, I was really in trouble now. Reality was starting to finally sink into my newly cleared mind, and I was starting to freak out. I yelled, Who's doing this? Why am I here? And of course, I got no response other than water running through rusty pipes. At least I had water. I'm no longer writing this journal for my own sake, but to whoever finds this. I don't know if I'm gonna make it, or if by some miracle I do. I think that I'm gonna keep walking forward, since there's not much else to do. I'll update more if I survive the night. Thursday. I've been walking around for a while. I haven't really found anything worth noting down yet, and that's the scary part. Other than the freakish dimensions of this place, everything, for the most part, seems normal to me. 
I know for one thing that this only looks like Plainview Middle School. I figured out that this isn't the place I know and I don't have any other answers. I'm pretty sure this is what happens to people who disappear. All I can remember aside from my diary is simply walking around the building and just transitioning here somehow. I never saw anything amiss. There was no transformation, no morphing of the walls. I just sort of walked here. It goes against all logical reasoning, yet here I am. Along with this ever-expanding hallway, there are rows and rows of classrooms going along it, obviously just like any other school building. I've scrounged around inside each room and it looks like a regular classroom, though untouched by people. The desks are neatly arranged, the chalk works. If I wasn't trapped in this hell dimension, I would have been fooled into thinking this was a regular classroom, maybe even the regular classroom, at least for a while. I have noticed though that their windows should have been, have all been replaced by blank walls, which stand out against the normal parts of the wall. Knocking on the sections of wall indicates that they're solid, it's like everything else. Additionally, some of the object placement seem a bit off or maybe just rushed. Of course, I did go through my school lunch pretty quick along with what little water I had left. I tried the water fountains and they seemed to work as well as any regular water fountain did. Food on the other hand is a little bit more complicated. There are vending machines around the school just like Plainview did and still does but I don't want to risk hurting myself breaking it open. If I can find any other source of food, I'll use it, just on the 1% off chance that I'm simply losing my mind and that I'll come to my senses after breaking something. The hallway itself seems to extend outwards forever, no matter how far I go or how fast I run. You know that little voice inside of you, the one that tells you what direction you're going or where things are once you close your eyes? Yeah, that's gone here. I can walk four corners going the exact same direction and still end up going forward, as if they were pushing me outward. I think this is what happens to people that disappear, but I can't be absolutely certain. Since from what I've been told these past few months, people disappear after not being observed or by simply never leaving a building, I think that's what happened to me. I think that somehow I've been erased. I don't think I'll ever make it out, or like the other cases, a trace of this diary ever making it out. I don't know why I keep updating this anymore, since I can't really backtrack. Maybe I'll just leave this on one of the desks in a classroom and leave it, in the practically zero chance that somebody comes the same way and finds it, if this can even be called a way.